नाउ फ्रेंड्स लेट एस स्टार्ट विथ चैप्टर नंबर नाइन दैट इज एग्रीकल्चरल इनकम अ वेरी स्मॉल टॉपिक वॉट आई हैव डन एक्चुअली इज द चैप्टर नंबर थ्री ऑफ योर मॉड्यूल विच इज एग्जम्शन आई हैव डिवाइडेड इंटू टू वीडियोज वन विल बी दिस एग्रीकल्चरल इनकम अनदर वन विल बी अदर एग्जम्शन सो लेट इज डिस्कस एग्रीकल्चरल इनकम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बेसिक डेफिनेशन सेक्शन टू क्लॉज वन ए सी बेसिकली वॉट ईच एंड एवरीथिंग रिलेटेड टू एग्रीकल्चरल प्रोड्यूस विल बिकम एग्रीकल्चर इनकम फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट से आई एम अ ओनर ऑफ अ लैंड एंड आई गिव दिस लैंड ऑन अ रेंट टू यू टू डू द फार्मिंग एक्टिविटी देन वॉट एवर रेंट यू विल बी पेइंग टू मी इट इज एग्रीकल्चर इनकम नाउ आफ्टर डूइंग फार्मिंग एक्टिविटी यू आर गिविंग दिस फॉर स्टोरेज इन अ वेयर हाउस नियर रूरल एग्रीकल्चरल लैंड इवन फॉर दैम द स्टोरेज चार्जेस विल बी एग्रीकल्चरल इनकम Let's say you are giving the product to me. I am a particular person who is doing the basic operation on this, and after my operation only you can sell this product to the market. So whatever fees you will pay to me, even it is agricultural income. And ultimately, when you will sell the product in the market, whatever sale value you will receive, that is also agricultural income. So what is written? Any rent or revenue derived from land situated in India and used for agricultural operation, it is agricultural income. second any income derived from such land by agricultural operation it is also agricultural income income derived by processing of agricultural produce which is you know necessary to make the product fit for the market agricultural income income from farm building which is on rural agricultural land it will be also agricultural income and last if you are selling or sapling or seedling grown in nursery you know nursery small small plantation that is also deemed agricultural income now once you decide that something is agricultural income then while calculating the tax some of the things you should keep in mind first of all section 10 clause 1 says agricultural income if arising from india it will be completely exempt so while calculating the income you should not add agricultural income into the income itself however while calculating the tax sometimes partial merger scheme will get applied now what is partial merger scheme and when it will get applicable partial merger scheme will get applicable when these three conditions are fulfilled number 1 you are a person who is taxable at slab rate individual huf aop boi ajp number 2 your net agricultural income that is income minus expense of agricultural purpose is more than 5000 and number 3 your total income which is taxable income it is more than basic exemption limit if these three conditions are fulfilled while calculating the tax payable partial merger scheme will get applied so you have to check first whether assessee is this slab rate wala person if no then while calculating the tax also agricultural income is exempt you don't have to do anything special but if this are slab rate wala person then check whether other two conditions are fulfilled that is agricultural income more than 5000 total income more than basic exemption limit If yes, then apply partial merger. If no, then that income will also be fully exempt. Now, when I say apply partial merger, what you will do exactly? For example, my total income is three lakh rupees. Let's say six lakh rupees, and my net agricultural income, which I have not added in the total income because it is exempt, is two lakh. I am an individual. Can I say I am individual? Condition number one satisfied. my net agricultural income more than 5000 condition number 2 satisfied my total income is more than basic exemption limit condition number 3 satisfied so i can't calculate tax on 6 lakh directly now i have to apply partial merger in that step number 1 see what is your total income plus net agricultural income can i say 6 lakh plus 2 lakh that will be 8 lakh step number 2 you calculate basic tax what i am saying calculate basic tax on this 8 lakh so can i say up to 5 lakh it will be 12500 above that uh, on 3 lakh 20% so my total basic tax will become 72500 now step 3 calculate what is your basic exemption limit plus net agricultural income the basic exemption limit in my example is 2 lakh 50000 and net agricultural income is 2 lakh so step 3 will be 4 lakh 50000 now step 4 says calculate basic tax on 4 lakh 50000 so can i say up to 250 no tax above that 5% so 2 lakh into 5% will be 10000 this can be said as the tax on agricultural income which government can't collect from you 
and that's why step 5 says what is the final basic tax step 2 minus step 4 that is this 72500 minus 10000 that will be 62500 ultimately you add says surcharge you deduct rebate whatever you want to do now means if partial merger is applicable how to determine the tax step number 1 find out total income plus net agricultural income step 2 find out basic tax on step 1 Step 3, find out basic exemption limit plus net agriculture income. Step 4, find out basic tax on step 3. And what will be your final basic tax? Step 2 minus step 4. And ultimately, you have to apply rebate, surcharge, says, etc, etc. Now, whether rebate applicable, whether surcharge applicable, for that you don't have to see the total income. You have to see only the taxable income, which is total income as per income tax. Means here I can say that uh, rebate not applicable because my total income is 6 lakh which is more than 5 lakh. Now here in this case if net agricultural income would have been only 2000 then I wouldn't have applied partial merger because agricultural income is not more than 5000. Then what I would have done directly on this 6 lakh I would have calculated the tax. No partial merger at all. If in this example let's say agricultural income is 2 lakh but I am a partnership firm. Still, I will only calculate tax on 6 lakh, partial merger will not get applied. Are you understanding this people, yes or no? Okay. One more example I have written over here. Let's say Mr. B, non-agricultural income 60 lakh, agricultural income 50 lakh, calculate tax payable. So, my taxable income is 60 lakh and my exempt income that is of agricultural income is over here 50 lakh. I am an individual. My agricultural income is more than 5000. My total income is more than basic exemption limit. Yes, partial merger applicable. Apply it. Step number 1. 60 lakh plus 50 lakh. That will be what? 1 crore 10 lakh. Now step number 2. Apply basic tax on 1 crore 10 lakh. That will be what? 10 lakh. Uh, sorry, I mean 1 crore into 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12,500 that will be 31 lakh 12,500 only basic tax you have to apply. Step number 3 what is basic exemption limit plus net agricultural income. So it will be 52 lakh 50,000 ultimately. Step number 4 calculate basic tax on 52 lakh 50,000 42 lakh 50,000 into 30 percent plus up to 10 lakh what will be the tax 1 lakh 12,500. So it will be 13 lakh 87,500. So ultimately what will be your basic tax? Step 2 minus step 4, 31, 12, 500 minus 13, 87, 500. It will be 17, lakh 25,000. But now can I say my total income is 60 lakh, more than 50 lakh but less than 1 crore? Then on my basic tax I will apply 10% surcharge. Then whatever answer will come, I will add 4% says my total tax will come to 19, lakh 73,400. Hey people, are you understanding this? Yes or no? Means rebate, surcharge, all the concept you have to apply by looking at what is your total taxable income. You don't have to add agricultural income in that. Now one more point is there. In PGBP chapter at the end, I have discussed some of the point related to this. That what I am having some of the agricultural operation and some of the basic operation and business operation and after that I am selling that product. So... Can I say whatever income I will get, some of the portion will be PGBP income which is taxable. Some of the income will be agricultural income which is exempt. Let's say I am having the business of tea. Then we have seen 40% PGBP, 60% will be agriculture. If it is rubber, then we have seen 35% PGBP, 65% agriculture. If it is coffee grown and cured, 25% PGBP, 75% agriculture. But if it is also roasted, then 40% PGBP, 60% agriculture. These percentages are specified by the act itself. But what if I am having my farm to prepare sugar cane, I am producing sugar cane, I am taking it to my factory, I am making, converting the same into sugar and I am selling the sugar after all. How to bifurcate this kind of income? For example, farming expense 10 lakh, business expense 5 lakh, I sold ultimately for 25 lakh. What is my total net profit? The total net profit is 10 lakh. Now it contains some of the portion of agricultural income, some of the portion of PGBP income. Then how I will bifurcate? Government said do one thing. 
अप्लाई दैट फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू वाला रूल सी वेन यू टूक दिस रॉ मटीरियल इन टू योर फैक्ट्री वॉट वॉज द फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल प्रोड्यूस लेट से फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू ऑन दिस डेट इज थर्टीन लैख हाँ तो गवर्नमेंट सेड योर एग्रीकल्चरल इनकम इज वॉट थर्टीन लैख माइनस टेन लैख दैट इज थ्री लैख रुपीज इज योर एग्रीकल्चरल इनकम एंड दिस थर्टीन लैख विल बी बाय डिफॉल्ट योर बिजनेस एक्सपेंडिचर स्टेशन वाला रूल बिजनेस एक्सपेंडिचर सो नाउ वॉट विल बी माई बिजनेस इनकम 25 फाइव लैख माइनस फाइव लैख बिजनेस एक्सपेंस माइनस दिस फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ 13 लैख दैट इज 7 लैख यू सी केयरफुली आई डिवाइडेड माई टेन लैख इन टू थ्री लैख एंड सेवन लैख जस्ट बाई यूजिंग अ सिंगल कंसेप्ट ऑफ फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू सो वॉट विल कम ओवर हियर इफ कॉमन एक्टिविटी इज देर हैविंग एग्रीकल्चरल एंड नॉन एग्रीकल्चरल एक्टिविटीज देन हाउ टू बाई फर किट फॉर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ रबर टी कॉफी आई जस्ट सेड द परसेंटेज For other common business, assume that agricultural produce is sold in the market. So, what will be agricultural income? Fair market value minus agricultural expense. And now, what you will assume that those product is purchased from the market. So, what will be PGBP income? Sale value minus business expense minus fair market value of agricultural produce. And that's how I will bifurcate. Are you understanding this, people? Yes or no? So, that is what important topics were there from agricultural income chapter. Thank you so much.